environmentalists have long urged people to think globally, act locally. Here to tell us about two cities in this province doing just that, from our studio at Queen's University in Kingston, our Eastern Ontario Hubs editor, David Rockney Corgan. Welcome to the show, David. Hi, Jan. Now, Peterborough is trying something new to help mitigate climate change. Tell us about the unique effort underway in that city. Sure, let's start with a group called For Our Grandchildren. Uh, this is a group uh, that was started in, in Toronto, uh, but has a chapter in Peterborough. Uh, and as the name suggests, uh, this group uh, intends to uh, conserve and preserve the environment uh, for, for their grandchildren. And uh, this group has been active in Peterborough for about seven years. And uh, something that they've been working on uh, for the last uh, couple of councils, really, uh, is trying to get more attention and trying to uh, get more of a sense of urgency on the climate change file. Uh, so um, with the new uh, council coming in, uh, they, they did some uh, lobbying and they did some advocating and they, you know, they asked people in the community to, uh, to get in touch with their councillor and tell them that they wanted to add a tax, a 0.8% increase, what would, would effectively be a 0.8% increase in the taxes. Uh, so the budget talks were in, were in January. This group um, was putting pressure on some councillors. I think when the councillors uh, realized, when they looked at the numbers, uh, that a tax probably uh, wasn't uh, in, in the cards for them, uh, they came back and uh, what, what came out on the floor was, was a motion to ask for people to donate to the climate fund. So they, they, uh, they voted to begin an account, to open up an account and solicit donations from the community to fund their climate change fund. Now t tell me about these donations. How exactly would they be spent? That, that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, the specifics of, of how they're being spent is still being worked out. Uh, this, is a, this is a very uh, expensive problem. It's expected to be a very expensive problem for municipalities all across Ontario, all across the, the country. Uh, and, and some of the costs are, are, it's hard to know what they are because, uh, you know, we don't know uh, what kinds of things could happen, uh, you know, flood, uh, flood risks. Uh, so there's, there's mitigation, but there's also adaptation. And, and these are both uh, big expenses. Uh, I know that uh, Al Slavin, he's uh, somebody who's been active with for our grandchildren. Uh, you know, he, he suggests that maybe uh, the city hires a part-time person uh, that can look at the climate file uh, exclusively and take it on a, a bit more aggressively. Uh, there's also a lot of talk about leverage, using these funds uh, to qualify for other uh, provincial or federal uh, programs that, that may come along uh, to, to adapt and to mitigate uh, climate change. When we talk about going green, particularly in a city, we have to, again, talk about expenses. What, what are the expensive parts uh, when we talk about changing and overhauling um, a city, going green? So there are the, the known costs and there are the unknown costs. Uh, and, and, and one of the known costs, uh, in, in Peterborough's case, for example, they know that the majority of, of emissions, of carbon emissions in the region are coming from uh, residential homes. About 36% of emissions are coming from residential homes. That's a huge amount. So uh, people that talk about uh, climate change uh, solutions uh, talk about retrofitting. So that's a that's a big expense. You know, depending on the age and size of a home, it could cost between ten ten and twenty thousand uh, dollars to retrofit a home. Uh, obviously, uh, cities won't be able to retrofit every single home with that kind of cost. That would you know putting you into the millions, if not billions, of dollars uh, when you're thinking about Canada. Certainly, the billions of dollars. Uh, so that's that's one big expense. Um, and and this probably this donation uh, fund uh, will probably be a drop in the bucket compared to some of the big, real big uh, upfront costs that you may see uh, municipalities, provinces, and, and, and the, the feds uh, take on over the next decade or so. Have a lot of people bought on to this uh, donation kind of strategy? How much have, has the city raised? So as of this week, uh, the city's raised about uh, $14,600 from uh, 62 donations. So that's uh, about $225 uh, on average there uh, for 62 donations. So a, a significant amount of money, $15,000 roughly in uh, just over a month. Uh, I, I do imagine that some of those uh, in, initial donors, uh, the numbers were, were quite high. There was a lot of excitement. I, it, would be, it would be interesting to see how that uh, sustains itself. Um, but as I just mentioned, you know, with the cost of a of a retrofit, for instance, being ten to twenty thousand dollars, 
you know, 14,600 and some odd dollars is, is really a drop in the bucket to what we're ultimately talking about here. Now, according to the experts you've spoken to, how effective is the community funded model, such as this one in Peterborough, compared to the traditional government tax? Uh, well, one person I, I spoke to in particular uh, is uh, Harry Kitchen. He's a professor emeritus at uh, Trent University, and he's an expert in uh, municipal governance and, and finance. And he sort of laughed when I, you know, explained how this uh, how this was was working. And you know, he he thinks that climate change uh, is something that we all contribute to, and and therefore it's something that we should all uh, pitch in to 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 help solve uh, if it is a problem that, that we can solve. And so, uh, you know, he sort of scoffed at this notion. He thinks that it's such a such a big problem that uh, for us to continue to, you know, kick it further down the road uh, and ask for donations in lieu of taxing everybody. Uh, and, and, you know, he does mention, and, and I think in fairness to uh, the city of Peterborough, this was you know, n not something that had been on the on the budget uh, before. This is a, an expense. Uh, certainly what they were proposing would would uh, there's some estimates saying it would work out to be about thirty two dollars uh, per household. And uh, as the mayor uh, of Peterborough pointed out, thirty two extra dollars a year is is going to be difficult for some. So I, I understand uh, the, the hesitance uh, for, for a new council uh, in particular to come out and, uh, and suggest a new tax on, on its residents. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the $14,000 versus the potentially $1.3 million that they would have made in revenue, there's, there's obviously a big difference there. Now, the city council in Kingston seems to be taking a different approach to climate change. What's on the table there? Yes, Jay, and I, I don't know if it's a, a different approach. It's just uh, taking a, a stronger approach and acting with a, even a little bit more urgency. They're uh, proposing a, a council proposal uh, next week uh, that will declare a climate emergency in Kingston, uh, which, uh, and I want to actually read the wording here because it's interesting. Uh, they will vote on a motion that will officially declare a climate emergency for the purposes of naming, framing, and deepening our commitment to protecting our economy our ecology and our community from climate change. So uh, they would be following in the footsteps of Halifax and Vancouver. Uh, those are two cities that have uh, named a climate emergency in their cities this year. Uh, those are both uh, coastal cities, uh, I, I just point out. Uh, and so Kingston would be the first in Ontario to do, uh, to do something similar. Uh, I, I have heard from uh, one of the councillors uh, that, that Kingston's motion won't be quite as specific um, as Halifax and Vancouver's, uh, but they will be declaring a climate emergency if this passes. And I think the, the, the sense that I get from it is that it will just um, give them that much more impetus and, and uh, direction to, to put their energies towards climate change solutions. Now let's talk a bit about Kingston's climate change plan. It was ranked first in the country in the January edition of the Climactic Change Journal. Let's have a quick look at the seven other Ontario cities that placed in the top 10 in Canada. So number one, Kingston, followed by Waterloo and Hamilton, rounding out two and three, Ottawa at number five, Peterborough at number seven, Thunder Bay and Markham at eight and nine. Toronto ranked roughly in the middle and Norfolk County and Caledon were in the bottom five out of the 63 Canadian municipalities that were part of that journal. Now, Kingston has been calling itself Canada's most sustainable city since 2009. What is it doing that other cities aren't? Sure. So uh, just to talk a little bit about uh, Canada's most sustainable city, that's really um, a vision, an aspiration that uh, Kingston has made for itself uh, going back, I think, as far as 2009. So 10 years, Kingston has sort of been aspiring to uh, to become Canada's most sustainable city. So a couple months ago, uh, when this uh, survey came out, this uh, report came out uh, from Dave Guyadine at the University of Guelph uh, that, that took a look at plans right across the country and, and rank them based on several different criteria. Uh, as you pointed out, Kingston ended up on, on top. Peterborough, we were talking about before, was also in the top 10. Uh, and one of the big things that came um, that, that I certainly took away from Kingston's position at the top was communication. So not only communicating uh, 
policies and, and discussing policies before they're made within the community, but also um, communicating their policies once they've been made. So how, you know, how does Kingston explain uh, the impact? How does Kingston explain the urgency? How does it explain its policies uh, to the residents? So that was one big takeaway for me. I, I know that um, cities that are able to communicate um, at every level uh, their, their, their plans for climate change uh, seem to do a better job, at least according to these criteria. Now, whether it's Kingston, Peterborough, or anywhere else in the province, what's the one biggest challenge you think uh, they'll have as they try to battle climate change? Well, we've been talking about it. It's the cost. There's a, there are unknown costs that, that could, you know, de depending on, uh, you know, what happens with, with, with climate change and, and the direction things are going, the, the, the costs could, could be just out of this world. They would be huge, into the billions. Uh, you know, there have been some reports going back years that, you know, say that Canada would be in the billions and billions of dollars uh, in, in paying for the effects of climate change. That is one big one. I think in the next decade or so, uh, one that I certainly notice, uh, some of our view viewers might notice, is political difference. I mean, you look at our, the previous uh, provincial government, the Liberals uh, put in place several programs that we've now seen. Uh, the, the PC government has come into power and and dismantled, repealed. Uh, so, so there's that. There's political difference. Uh, you know, n not just between uh, you know different uh, different political parties, but then within communities as well. Different approaches. You know, uh, Peterborough, uh, you know, might not be the uh, the only one, uh, or might be the only one now accepting donations. But as the problem becomes more acute, uh, you may see uh, more cities realizing that uh, that now is the time to act. Uh, and and you know. Throwing money at it isn't going to solve it, uh, but certainly having conversations uh, like like in Peterborough, like Peterborough is having right now, uh, is is a, is a good start. Something we will definitely continue to follow. Always a pleasure, David Rockney Corrigan, our Eastern Ontario Hub editor. Thanks again. Thank you. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.